Well, I figured you would pull out your pocket, Ronnie, for this lesson. This is on simplifying radicals. The first thing that you need to know in simplifying radicals, I always recommend you writing these two lines of numbers on the top of your page. Every page. I recommend this. It really helps. Up here, I just have 1 through 12. Then what I've done is squared each number. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared, 16, and so on. The opposite of squaring something is square root. So if I come here, square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 16 is 4. These numbers in this box are called perfect squares. They are called perfect squares because when you take the square root of them, square root of 4, 2. Square root of 9, 3. Square root of 16, 4. Square root of 25, 5. When you take the square root of these numbers, they give you a whole number. Anytime a square root gives you a whole number, not a decimal number, it's called a perfect square. Every number in this box is called a perfect square. When you take the square root of it, it gives you a whole number. In this lesson of simplifying radicals, we are looking for perfect squares. Okay, Let's look at 17c, number 8, the square root of 28. I believe the instructions say to simplify the radical. Okay. When we simplify radicals, we are looking for perfect squares. The first thing you want to do is look at the factors of 28. What are all the factors of 28? Well, 1 times 28, most of the time we will not be looking at the factors dealing with multiplying by 1. Okay? We can also do 2 times 14 is 28. Then 4 times 7, and I believe that that's it. So. Those are all the factors of 28. Which set of numbers has a perfect square in it? Remember, this green box lists, lists all the perfect squares. Out of all these six numbers, the only set that has a perfect square is this set right there of 4 times 7. So since these factors of 4 times 7 has a perfect square, of 4 is a perfect square, these are the factors we want to use. So we're now going to break up the square root of 28 into the square root of 4 times the square root of 7. Remember from rules of multiplying radicals, if you go backwards, the square root of 4 times the square root of 7 does give you the square root of 28. Okay? Now we're doing opposite of breaking it up. So we're going to break up square root of 28 into the factors of square root of 4 times square root of 7. Square root of 4 is a perfect square. I usually write my perfect squares first because now I simplify it more. Square root of 4 is 2, not square root of 2. Do not make the mistake of writing square root of 2. I have seen that many, many times. Okay? Square root of 4 is not square root of 2. It's just 2. And then we cannot simplify square root of 7 anymore. The square root of 7, the factors are only 7 times 1. Neither one of those are a perfect square. So square root of 7 cannot be simplified anymore. And so 2... 2 times square root of 7 is the same thing as square root of 28. If you do not believe me, you can put square root of 28 in your calculator and get a decimal number. Then you can do 2 times square root of 7, and they should give you the same decimal number. Okay, now let's move on to 17, 7, square root of 12. Remember, the very first thing you want to do for any problem to simplify a radical is to determine the factors of that number. The factors of 12 are 1 and 12. We're not going to use that because 12 is not a perfect square already. Then we have 2 times 6 and 4 times 3. Now, out of all those numbers, we are looking for a perfect square. Remember, if you can't remember, the perfect squares are listed in your green box that you have listed on your paper. Out of all these numbers, 4 is the perfect square, so we want to use this set of factors. So in order to break it up, we say square root of 12 is the same thing as square root of 4 times square root of 3. I usually write my perfect square first. To keep going and to keep simplifying, square root of 4 is 2, and then square root of 3 cannot simplify anymore. So square root of 12 is the same thing as 2 times square root of 3. 
I think of simplifying radicals just as reducing fractions. If I tell you to reduce the fraction of 4 eighths, you can reduce that to 1 half. 4 eighths equals 1 half. Square root of 12 equals 2 times square root of 3. Okay, going down to 17, 8, square root of 200. You need to think of all the factors of 200. Well, we have 1 times 200, but 200 is not a perfect square. There are going to be many, many factors of 200, okay? Without listing all of them, I need to think about, I need to go back to my perfect squares uh, list of numbers. I need to think, are any of these factors a factor of 200? Well, I know that 4 is. That would be 4 times 50. But if you break this up, then you can see 50 is also going to have factors of 25 times 2. You can use square root of 4 and square root of 50. You're just going to have to keep simplifying until you can't simplify anymore. Okay? The idea in simplifying radicals is to pick the largest perfect square possible. So literally what you can do is take 200 and divide it by these numbers. Does 200 divide by 4? Yes. Does 200 divide by 25? Yes. You keep going until you find a number, the largest number possible, and I can get to 100. Does 200 divide by 100? Yes. You want to use the largest perfect square possible. Okay? I am going to work the problem with this, but I'm going right now I'm going to use the largest factor possible which is 2 times 100, okay? 4 is a perfect square. I could use that, but I want to use the one with the largest one possible, so I'm going to use this one, 2 times 100. So I can break this up into square root of 100 times square root of 2. I write my perfect square factor first because I want my whole number to be in front when I'm done. Square root of 100 is 10, and then square root of 2 cannot be simplified anymore. So the final answer is 10 square root of 2. Again, you want your whole number written in front of your radical. In the world of algebra, whole numbers are written first and then your radical. Okay, let's rework this problem off to the side using this factor. If I had chosen square root of 4 times square root of 50. Square root of 4 is 2, and then this would have square root of 50. I, look, I always look to see, just as in your reducing fractions, can I reduce any more? In simplifying radicals, you continue to look and say, can I simplify the radical? Can I simplify the square root of 50? What are the factors of 50? Okay, some factors of 50 are 25 times 2. Is either one of those a perfect square? Yes, 25 is a perfect square, which means I can simplify square root of 50 again. So you still keep this 2 in front. You do not lose the 2. That 2 has to come down. Then break square root of 50 up into square root of 25 times square root of 2. Continue to bring this 2 down. Square root of 25 is 5. And then square root of 2 is square root of 2. That does not simplify anymore. Remember, this means 2 times square root of 25 times square root of 2. So therefore, we bring our 2 down. 2 times the square root of 25, which is 5, times square root of 2. Now we're back to multiplying radicals. Numbers to numbers, radicals to radicals. 2 times 5 is 10, square root of 2, and you get the same number as doing it the shorter way. So if you pick factors that can continue to keep simplifying, just keep simplifying your radical until you cannot simplify it anymore. Square root of 2, the only factors of 2 are 2 times 1, and neither one of those are a perfect square, so therefore square root of 2 cannot simplify anymore. Just as up here, square root of 3. The only factors of 3 are 3 times 1. Neither one of those are a perfect square, so square root of 3 cannot simplify anymore. Okay, let's jump down to 17a, number 12. 2 times square root of 3 times 2 times square root of 3. We are now taking simplifying radicals and combining with the lessons of multiplying and dividing radicals. Okay, we are multiplying radicals. Remember the rule, are, the rule was numbers to numbers, radicals to radicals. So 2 times 2 is 4, square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9. Always look to see if you can simplify your radical. This radical will simplify. It is already a perfect square. Square root of 9 is 3. 
This means 4 times square root of 9, so it would be 4 times 3 equals 12. And that would be your final answer. Now let's jump down to 17b number 12. Again, applying simplifying radicals to multiplying radicals, numbers to numbers, radicals to radicals. This one has no radical with it. So we're just doing numbers to numbers. 8 times 3, 24. No radical with the 8. So it's just like a 1 there. There's no radical to multiply, so, but we still have our square root of 20. Always look to see if you can simplify your radical. Okay? The factors of 20 are 1 and 20, 2 times 10, 5 times 4. Now you look to, say, to, to ask, are any of those a perfect square? 4 is a perfect square, so this is the set of factors that we want to use to break up square root of 20. So continue to carry down your 24. Do not lose that. Now break up square root of 20 into square root of 4 times square root of 5. This means 24 times square root of 4 times square root of 5. So I still have my 24 times square root of 4, which square root of 4 is 2 times square root of 5. Combining numbers, numbers to numbers, radicals to radicals. 24 times 2 is 48 times square root of 5. I cannot simplify square root of 5 anymore because the factors of 5 are 5 times 1 and neither one of those are a perfect square. So 48 square root of 5 is your final answer.